Hey guys, welcome back on my channel. So finally after two weeks I'm back with a new video of our MATLAB series which is about programming mistakes. So what programming mistakes you can make in general and specifically inside of MATLAB. So today we are starting very easily, so what you can do wrong with naming etc. and then successively work our way up in terms of difficulty of our problems. So before we get started, special thank you to MathWorks and especially Sebastian, the guy working for MathWorks in Munich. Shout out to him. He was sending me this cool shirt with the equation here. We will cover this operation, by the way, in a future series, so make sure to stay tuned. And they also sent me some other cool stuff like this Rubik's Cube here, for instance, which I'll give away at the end of the series if you want. And some other cool stuff. So make sure to check it out on Twitter. I posted the photo there. So uh, if you want the cube but cannot solve it, it's not difficult to, to learn, actually. It takes you one week to solve it in around five minutes. But that's a different topic. So I would say without further ado, uh, let's jump into MATLAB and let's get started. Hey guys, welcome back now in the MATLAB environment. And here you can see in section one, we are starting with the very first problem, which is uncommenting problem. So here we can see a variable a that I have defined, which holds the value 10. And in this line, I want to add variable a plus variable b. However, if I mark this and right click or just click F9, you see the variable a has been stored inside the workspace with a value of 10. Now, if I want to execute this line here, MATLAB tells us undefined function or variable var b. And maybe we have accidentally forgot to remove this percentage symbol here. So what we have to do is to make sure to uncomment this, make sure that this variable is written inside our workspace, and then this line would perfectly work. Moving on to problem number two is misspelling variable names. So in this case, we have number of students, which holds the value of 30,000. We want to save this in the workspace as well. Now it could be that I have written it too fast and want to print the value out. But if I execute this, undefined function or variable number of students here. So it actually tells us, hey, did you mean this? And we say yes. And to make sure we don't get the mistake when running the whole script, we would actually have to change this right here. So we just comment this, changed to the actual variable name. Moving on to section number three, which is case sensitivity. So what you have to know is that MATLAB is case sensitive. So I have defined a string, which is my name equals to Yusuf. And if I want to call this and have accidentally put capital N here on this place, this would not work. Like if I now mark this, click F9, now it's in the workspace as a string and want to now execute my name, again says undefined function or variable my name. So we would have to change this back to lower n and then calling this variable would work. Now section number four, array indexing error. So this is very important to know. So MATLAB starts its arrays by one, which might be very unusual for some of you. And also for those who have some Python experience, because in Python, array indexing starts at zero. So MATLAB counts like this. This is the first element, not the zeroth element. It's the first one, second one, third one, fourth one, and fifth one. However, if I want to access the sixth element, this would not work. So let's try it out. Click F9. Now we have the variable B in our workspace, as we can see. And if I want to execute this line here, it says index exceeds the number of array elements five. So it says us, okay, B has actually five elements and we want to access the sixth one which is not possible. So we would have to change this line and just comment it for you and say you would have to change this line here, please. Moving on to section number five, which is also a little bit Python related. If, let's say if you're using NumPy, you can access the last element by using this command here, b minus one. However, if you do this in MATLAB, array indices must be positive integers or logical values. So make sure to be aware of that. Moving on to the next section, section number six, which is parentheses error. Sometimes if we're writing too fast, we can see that we maybe forget the semicolon, which is not too bad actually, we'll just get the output. But in this case, we have forgot the parentheses or a bracket. 
So if we execute this code, invalid expression, so it would uh, also say talk about the parentheses and it also suggests us, hey, did you mean this? And of course we meant that and make sure to correct this as well in our code. So the next thing I want to show here is string error and for that we'll just remove this one right here and try to execute this line here. And it would say, hey, string is not terminated properly and you would know, okay, I have to put this right here and execute it again and it will save my name in the workspace again. Now basic arithmetic errors of course, like if we have this addition, this the summation of numbers right here and we have this plus sign which is just at the end of the expression. It would also tell us invalid expression, check for missing or extra characters. So this character here is too much, we would just remove it and then we, we are good to go. Section 9 now talks about function error. I want to call a function which is called average and I want to let's say determine, let's say just add a few more numbers, I want to determine the average of these five values. And to create a function, let's just quickly introduce how you can do that. You click on new, click on function, and then I would just adapt everything here. I would say the output should be y and the function should be called average because I am calling average. And then it would ask me to save the file. I would just put it in the Num number three folder, common programming mistakes, and call the file average.m, which it automatically does because the file name has to be identical to the function name. That's very important to know. We click save, and we want input arguments is just x, and remove this right here, and just say y equals to the sum of the input divided by the length of the vector, we give it, and we have now defined a function. Let's try to execute this line right here. And you can see that it here first says, average is not found in the current folder or on MATLAB path, but it exists in, and then it gives us the folder structure. So what's the problem here? You can see on the left side that the current folder is not the one we actually want to have. So what I usually do is to click F5, click change folder, it would run the whole script and would throw an error anyway. So we just type clear and clear command window. Now we can see that when the right folder where the average function is as well as our M file. Now let's try to run this average function here. Okay, now another problem. Error using average, too many input arguments. Now the thing is that you have to know that the average function wants a vector so if we put some brackets right here so that we have an input vector and try to execute this again it would give us the mean as you can see right here you can check it by yourself it's actually correct let's just click the command window for the next section which talks about dimension mismatch and i put here check sizes of course you can check the sizes either here in the in the workspace where you can just right click just right click here in the workspace and then make sure to activate the size and it would show you the size. In this case, the ants, last answer we printed out is a one by one vector. Let's say we do something else. Let's say we want to have this vector right here. It would tell us, okay, it's size one by five. So one row and five columns. So in this case, we have an initialization of a vector one, which gives us random numbers with 20 rows and two columns. We evaluate this and we can have a quick look at it, how it looks like. This is how it looks like, so 20 rows, two columns. And if you want to access or say, hey, please take the first five rows and the first two columns, so the whole columns actually, and please put these values to zero. Now, if we try to do that, able to perform assignment because the size of the left side is 5 by 2 and the size of the right hand side is 5 by 1. So the cool thing about MATLAB is that in the newer versions it tells you actually the dimensions but if you're not sure you can also say you can copy this mark Control C Control V then type in size put everything into brackets it would say 5 by 2 and copy paste, put size around that, 
and say 5 by 1. So there's a dimension mismatch as you can see. So what we can do is just switch this number to a 2 and then we would have resolved the error. We would just check this and you see no error and let's check the vector 1 and you can see the first five rows and the two columns have been assigned to a zero as you can see so this was very successful and we can move on and of course I will upload the M file to the github repository so you can read thoroughly through the comments that I've made so section number 11 errors without actually throwing an error what does that mean so let's say we initialize a variable a which is 4 and we have a matrix 1 which is initialized by zeros which is basically the dimension 4 4 rows and one column so we have this we can have a look at the matrix okay looks good four rows one column nothing too bad actually and then we run this for loop. let's say just for fun we have written this in our code or it has some meaning depending on the programmer who, who did that and it would give us the output of the squares of the for loop from 1 to 4 actually. So we have 1, then 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and uh, 4 squared is 16. And we would print that out by writing this line here. Everything good? No errors so far? Now we have the, let's say we have the option or exercise to plot a complex sign function let's say we put this plot in brackets and just say hey our supervisor has said that we have the exercise to just write this code without plotting anything so we execute this part of the code here okay cool nothing happened as you can see no errors let's just plot this for a moment we uncomment this let's just plot this here and you would see this does not look like a sign function, right? It just starts here. Maybe let's just change the line width for a moment that you can see the line a little bit better. Let's just do it for the whole section again. And you can see that this is definitely not a sign function. And yeah, there is some mistake inside of that. So what we actually mean by plotting the complex sign function is that this i here actually is not an accounting index. So this is actually a complex, the complex i. So there are several ways how we can resolve this. We can either say, hey, please clear i, so that the variable is deleted. So this counter would be deleted. And we can basically start, or MATLAB would know what this i actually means. So if we execute this part of the code, we would actually get the sine wave from, uh, from minus one second to one second. And what we can then do as well is, let's say we don't use this clear eye. Let's just comment this for a moment. We can also say, please use one eye right here. Then we could evaluate this section. You could say, okay, hey, wait, wait a moment. We have cleared eye and now it's not in our workspace. This is a bit cheating. Let's just execute this code here again. And now let's try, i is now redefined as you can see, i is the value of 4, but we said this is 1i. And as you know, you cannot define a variable that starts with a number. Let's say I want to define, let's say 2o is a random number, let's say 10 columns, uh, 10 rows, 2 columns. We want to execute this, it does not work. So invalid expression, you can just, let's say, define it o equals 2. That would be um, a correct name for a variable although it's not very meaningful so make sure to give your variable meaningful names so let's plot this again and you can see it works because we have put a one in front of the eye and actually knows matlab knows that this one eye means zero real parts and one imaginary part as you can see but we will talk about that in the next series where we will cover special values and operators and also talk about the real and complex numbers and how you can work with them. So I have commented here, reinitialize I. So once the, uh, one of the biggest problems I see personally, see, especially working as a tutor in university and helping students to work MATLAB, uh, to write MATLAB code and work on assignments is that they reuse variable names in a most common one is i. This i is very popular here to use for, let's say, for loops. 
The very important thing is to reinitialize values that have been used or to make sure that you use meaningful names for your variables in order to avoid such problems. So in section number 13, I want to give you the last common programming mistake. And as a live demo, I, I will upload a PDF of other mistakes that you can make on my website. And you can also find it on the GitHub repository page that I will, of course, link down in the description. So make sure to check it out. You can print it out if you want. So it will be a very nice PDF for you guys that you can check out. So let's move on to the last one, then we are good to go. We have here Matrix 2 that we have, and it has five dimensions, as you can see. Very hard to imagine, actually, what five dimensions mean. It's like mind-blowing. <laughs> and we want to access the 200th element so this is actually here it's a problem uh, we have we cannot access the element 200th element again because it was just as 120 but let's say we ha want to access the 100th element just for the sake of demonstration so matrix 2 here the 100th element is very hard to interpret so we don't know where we actually are and which dimension we actually are so what we can do and what is legal MATLAB code is we say to access the first element of the first dimension right here. Then we want to access also the first one of the second dimension, the second element of the third dimension, the third element of the fourth dimension right here, and maybe the first element again of the fifth dimension. Then we can mark this, click F9, and it would give us this 0 0.1751. And as a general tip, for n dimensional matrices, you just use n minus 1 commas to write it very clear and concise. So we have here five dimensions, have four commas as you can see, and here we also use four commas and the five dimensions. So that was the fifth video of our MATLAB series. I hope that you really enjoyed it, as always, of course. And if you have any questions, comments, put them down in the description. I will answer every question or comment you will send me. So make sure to make use of that. So the announcement I wanted to make, I was talking earlier on, was I will be in China for approximately three weeks, so in Shanghai. And I will pre-produce all my following videos, not all of them, but two to three videos actually. And will put them on my Patreon page. So if you want to have access to the videos beforehand, so one week before the release, you can check out the Patreon page. And that's how we will handle things or video releases in the future so that means so you can watch every video one week before the initial release as I just said on my patreon page so you can also choose the lowest tier so if you spend like one dollar you can watch the video already beforehand so that was the announcement I wanted to make other than that make sure to hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already you know that share it with your friends colleagues family cat dog whatever just make sure to share it and spread the love for, for simulation, the channel, and specifically MATLAB in this case. And I would say, have a nice day, evening, night, from wherever you're watching on the world right now. I hope you're having a great day and see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>